All right. <clears throat> Hello, YouTube friends. Let's go on another journey here. You ready? Uh, today, right? This is a video that I already, I already made this once. Uh, it was on my first YouTube page, but you know, whatever. Um, all right. This today we're gonna do a fun study. We're gonna talk about the Leviathan, right? And this, uh, this Leviathan. There is an internal Leviathan, there's an external Leviathan, and then there's a worldly Leviathan, okay? And the worldly Leviathan is just the Roman system of government that feeds on its own people and then empowers itself for them. Alright, anyway, honestly, I enjoy these, these studies about like mythological creatures and stuff. I do, I enjoy them. It's just something that's always interested me. Uh, but this is basically a remake of my other video. And I made that on my first channel, like I said. But I deleted that channel. And it was really, it was for no reason. Because right now on my new channel here that I'm, I'm using, I have the exact same problem. Right? They, uh, they capped my views. My views have gone up and down. Ever since I got to a thousand, basically, check it out. I keep track of uh, the changes that they make, and honestly, it's 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 uh, it's upsetting. But I mean, it is what it is. I don't do it for the numbers. I do this because I enjoy it. You see? Let me make sure here. This only take a second, right? This is it's hard to write with this. Uh, Eight hundred ninety-eight. That's where I was at when they started messing with it and then they took 989 sorry 989 is where I was at then they took it to 909 then 848 868 it went back up 871 then back to 868 and then 858 and then 841 and that's where it's at now but they do the shit to me all the time uh, anytime I get subscribers they they take subscribers away um, on my other channel like I said when I made this one I got like four or five emails that said congratulations on having a hundred subscribers and then I would you know get on YouTube and I have like 95 subscribers and then a hundred and three and I'd get an email and then back to 95 YouTube be on some bullshit but I don't care like I said I enjoy these these studies and then I just share what I learned. So, Leviathan it is. What we're going to do here is uh, we're going to figure out what the Leviathan is, okay? And this is going to be the external. Because I already told you what the, the worldly Leviathan is. It's, it's the, the system of fake laws that feed on the spirits of people. Uh, this will be external as in the animal kingdom, okay? Because to do the internal Leviathan is easy once you do the external, right? So, let's look at this description. Job, chapter 41, verses 1 through 10. Can you catch him with a fish hook? Or hold his tongue down with a rope? Can you put a ring in his nose? Or pierce his jaw with a barb? Wait, catch him going fishing. Will he entreat you at length? Will he let you know he's coming? Will he speak with you softly? Will he agree with you to be your slave forever? Will you play with him as you would with a bird, or keep him on a string to amuse the women? Will a group of fishermen turn him into a banquet? Will they divide him among the merchants? Can you fill his skin with darts, or his head with fish spears? If you lay your hand on him, you won't forget it. All your other worries will cease to be and you'll never do it again look any hope of capturing him is futile one would fall prostrate at the very sight of him no one is fierce enough to rouse him who can strip off his scaly garment who can enter his jaws right that's crucial who can enter his jaws who can pry open the doors of his face so close to his terrible teeth. His pride is in his rows of scales tightly sealed together. One is so close to the next that no air can come between them. 
They are stuck one onto another, interlocked and impervious. When he sneezes, light flashes out. His eyes are like the shimmering of dawn. From his mouth go fiery torches, and sparks come flying out. His nostrils belch steam like a cauldron boiling on the fire. His breath sets coals ablaze. Flames pour from his mouth. Strength resides in his neck, and dismay dances ahead of him as he goes. The layers of his flesh stick together. They are firm on him, immovable. Right, this part right here, this is gonna be this is gonna be crucial because this ties into a whole nother part. The Leviathan, right? His heart is as hard as a stone. Yes, hard as a lower millstone. When he rears himself up, the gods are afraid. That's gods with a lowercase g. Beside themselves in despair. If a sword touches him, it won't stick. Neither will a spear or a dart or a lance. He regards iron as straw and bronze as rotten wood. An arrow can't make him flee. For him, sling stones are as much as chaff. Clubs count as hay, and he laughs at a quivering javelin. His belly is as sharp as fragments of pottery, so he moves across the mud like a threshing sledge. He makes the depths seethe like a pot. He makes the sea boil like a perfume kettle. He leaves a shining wake behind him, making the deep seem to have white hair. On earth, there is nothing like him, a creature without fear. He looks straight at all the high things. He is king over all proud beasts. Now, the absolute amazing thing, right, about the Bible is that every verse has at least two meanings, okay? One internal one external, right? And usually there's one that involves the whole world. Uh, and that can be proven right here. These verses, are they are amazing. And they describe something inside of you, right? By using poetic devices that describe something outside of you, okay? So, looking at these verses here, what animal does it sound like? I'll point out a few irrefutable, okay? Irrefutable facts that will help. Leviathan is absolutely a serpent, okay? And remember, a snake is a serpent, but a serpent is not just a snake. It's all, all slithery reptiles, okay? So it is a reptile. It's, it's a twisting reptile, and that doesn't mean like a snake. A snake doesn't twist. They can, but it's a coil. Snakes coil up, right? The Leviathan twists its whole body. Uh, this verse here basically says he's no one's pet and he isn't going to be gentle with you. And that verse is Job 41, 1, the very beginning. Will he make many pleas with you? Will he speak to you soft words? Will you play with him as a bird or will you put him on a leash for the women to show him off? His eyes are like dawn, referring to if you see his eyes in the dark, you can see them shine, right? Um, so, what do you think it is? Right, if you want to, f like, figure it out yourself, pause it, because I'm going to say it. It's a crocodile. Kind of obvious, right? Like, if you listen to that again, it's, it's a crocodile. Clear as, clear as day. So, two more things I want to touch on here. This is going to be a, a kind of short video. Um, it's, it's, like, halfway done. Um. One thing, right, is that although the Bible is, like, Israel is the favored nation in the Bible, right, um, there's no crocodiles in Israel. In fact, there are no crocodiles between Egypt and Iran. Egypt on the, the left, the west from Israel, and Iran is to the east from Israel, and uh, it's right in the middle, and there's nothing, no crocodiles in there at all. Um, so the middle ground between Egypt and Iran, the whole area is crocodile free. I just thought that would be interesting to share because it, it means something. Um, all right, last thing I want to talk about, <clears throat> and it's something to think about also, um, 
the internal Leviathan, okay? This is the serpent that is the devil, right? Uh, perfectly described by the crocodile, because those, those things... All right. Job 41, 34. He sees everything that is high. He is king over all the sons of pride, right? Um, so this, this comes from the um, American... My Bible, American Standard Version or some shit. It's made using um, all the references from all ancient sources, right? King James is not made that way. Uh, I don't remember what it says exactly. But here's what it says in the um, Jewish translated Bible or some shit. He looks straight at all high things. Oh, okay. He looks straight at all high things. His eyes are on top of his head. Uh, he is king over all proud beasts, right? And then my Bible says, <clears throat> sorry, I lost it. All right. He is king over the sons of pride, right? And that's, that's obviously, that's pretty separate things there. But let's get into this. I dug into this myself because the words sons of pride, that's something worth looking into. King of, the sons of pride, okay? Where does pride come from? Sons, in this sense, I believe, means those who operate under this, right? Like, uh... As in those who operate like under God's laws, right? Those are the sons of God. Those who operate under the laws of the state, right? Those are patriots, okay? Now we got to break this down. They're sons of their nation. They say the motherland. They love the motherland. Oh, the two-eyed man. And the term patriot, right, is two words. Pat and riot. Okay? The pat is patriarchy. Uh being the spiritual Abrahamic patriarchy, the sons of the promise of God, okay? Um, and riot, you know what a riot is, it's, uh, it's like an expression of opposition through violence. It's a good way to put it. So, patriots are who the Bible talks about when it says, and this is Psalm 2, verses 1 through 6, why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? Those are patriots. The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rule, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against His anointed. His anointed are the sons of God, the chosen ones, you could say. Um, anyway, the rulers take counsel together, obviously, against the Lord and against His anointed, saying, "Let us break their bands." In pieces and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in heaven shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. He shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have my king on my holy hill of Zion. Now I have my king on my holy hill of Zion. Do you get it? I hope so. I'm sure you do. Like the the seven people that I've talked to on YouTube are, are they get it. All right. So the sons of pride, right? Those are the sons of pride, the patriots and their leaders, whose king is the twisting serpent of the deep, right? You remember what the deep is symbolic of? It's always water. Water is a symbol of the mind, okay? Let's identify this internal Leviathan though. Uh, let's identify the devil, the Satan, okay? Because it's absolutely inside of you, and it's as ruthless as a crocodile. He has no fear, heart of stone, right? Um, so, we're going to do this. Let's consider a few things, and we can figure it out no problem, okay? We know, right, the kingdom is within, and the battle is for the mind, right? There's a higher mind and a lower mind, and the higher mind is expansive and universal, and it shines on the lower mind, 
but the lower mind doesn't comprehend the higher mind, right? The light shined upon the darkness, but the darkness comprehended it not. Like a room, right? A room in a house, okay? The room doesn't know about the whole house, and the whole house knows about the room. In fact, the room is only there because the rest of the house, right? Higher and lower mind. Um, is that a good metaphor for that? I use houses a lot. Like, mansions are really good to explain this. There's a reason. In my father's house, there were many mansions. Pride comes from the lower mind, right? We know that. Humility comes from the higher mind. Humility is how you defeat pride. The lower mind is the ego. Self-centered and self-serving. The higher mind is Jerusalem, the woman, the place where God dwells. The sons of pride are the men who operate from the ego. It's that simple, okay? The ego is the crocodile. The ego is the god of this world, basically. Uh, his number one tool is money, right? And that's just one way to put it because it's, it's materialism. Leviathan is the king of the sons of pride. So Leviathan is... That's right. That's right. It is the ego. It is the thing that's self-centered and only worries about you when the higher mind focuses on serving others and helping others. The, uh, the ego is iniquity. It's unfair. It's worried about itself. But the higher mind is worried about others and, and tries to help and serve people. Right? So, that was the Leviathan. I hope everybody had fun. I love doing these, these old monster videos. Um, I guess that's it, guys. Remember, serve others, help everybody else, um, and I'll see you soon. Peace out, guys. Love you.